Well, good good afternoon to our friends here on the East Coast, and good morning to the rest of the country. We're we're happy that you can join us uh, today. We have uh, a special guest. I have a special guest on the line, a, a gentleman named Fabian Gonzalez. Um, Fabian is a regional vice president at uh, our national vice president at uh, Symmetra, and Fabian has a uh, unique specialty in as, as it pertains to the life insurance distribution market in that he has extensive experience in both the U.S. domestic and international high net worth foreign national markets. Um, Fabian has built distribution at both ING and AIG, also had, has held positions at Sagicor and Royal Company for Health and Life. Um, and quite frankly, there is not many um, in the industry that have the foreign national multicultural market knowledge that I know than Fabian. So um, today's going to be a little bit different. In, normally, we, we would take a more uh, educational or professor type approach and we're, we're advancing slides and teaching. But today, what I've done is put uh, a somewhat controversial question set together from my friend Fabian here so that we don't get bored with the, the everyday uh, nuances of foreign national underwriting. We're going to actually dig into you know, how does it work? Where are the pitfalls? Um, why are some companies on board and others aren't? So, you know, Fabian, I'd like to uh, just just turn to you so you can introduce yourself and, and maybe say a few words before we, we kick this off. No, yeah, absolutely. You know, and thank you, you know, Anthony. And, you know, I'm so excited, uh, you know, that you put together, you know, and reach me to me, you know, like a month ago to, to discuss this, this, this market, you know, again, you know, and thank you for the invitation. I am very excited, uh, you know, to share some of the things that I have learned, you know, over the year, I, I has been in the foreign national market, uh, you know, for many, many years. I actually entered in this market accidentally, you know, because someone, uh, when I lived long time ago in Argentina, my home country said, hey, you know, they are products, international products, and you work, you know, and you know, with, with corporations and things like that. So maybe it's a fit. And and basically, you know, at that moment, I I learned, you know, that was early in the nineties that it is an opportunity to sell, you know, life insurance with with foreign national. I I has been in the United States since nineteen ninety nine. So I will be celebrating my twenty three anniversary very soon. Uh, and again, you know, what I want to do today, you know, is, is, is share things that I have learned, okay, you know, uh, we, and I also still learning, okay, because this is very unique market and, you know, it has been evolved uh, over the years, but, uh, you know, and now with Symmetra, you know, I am celebrating my, my third anniversary uh, with this company uh, very soon. Um, and I really enjoy what we are doing at Symmetra to support, you know, uh, or largest organization like Life Brokerage uh, and other, uh, you know, across the country that they have interest, you know, in this market. You know? So again, you know, thank you for the invitation, Anthony. I am very excited to share some of my thought ideas and what I have learned over the years. Well, happy anniversary, my friend. We're happy to have you. Um, so I'm not going to make it easy on you, Fabian. So I, let, let's let's dive right in. We're gonna we're gonna put you on the spot a little bit. So question number one in my question set, right? Historically, American citizens have been have been a little apprehensive towards cash value life insurance, and for the most part, policies are sold versus bought, right? And it hasn't been until recently that cash value life insurance has become more mainstream in the United States, and I think that we still have like a lot of work to do, right? So shifting gears, Fabian, why is there such a craving for the for foreign nationals to buy US life insurance policies? And further, what do they see as the value in the asset that US citizens may not? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And, you know, I, you know, I, I, let me do this exercise, you know, I, I know that we all in this call, we are no millionaires, right? But thinking for a moment that you are a millionaire, right? You have a lot of money, right? You have a lot, a lot, a lot of money, you know? You know, I always heard that with money, you can buy everything except happiness, right? But let's put it in this perspective, you know, when you are a millionaire, you know, and you have a lot of money, you know, what you really want is to have the best of the best, right? Let's think about that you're looking for a luxury car, right? Well, you know, you can afford a Bentley, you can afford a Rolls Royce. Um, let's see, for example, you know, you want a sport car, right? You want to, you can afford a Ferrari, right? You can afford, I don't know, a Maserati, a Lamborghini, right? 
uh, I don't know, in terms of clothing, right? You may be going and you want a French designer, Italian designer, right? Basically, you know, you go into those countries, right? That they have the best of the best in those products, right? That they, you know, they are, they are the, the excellent, you know, of, in, in those products, right? And when people around the world, you know, thinking about life insurance, you know, especially when you are a millionaire or a billionaire, you also want the best of the best, you know, and I have been lucky in, in my life that, you know, travel around the world, learn, talk with a lot of people. And, and I found that, you know, the product that we manufactured in the United States, you know, are the best of the best. You know, a life insurance product, you know, are basically, you know, the best of the best. You know, when you when you are a run of, you know, other countries and you're taking a look, you know, the product portfolio available, you know, you know, some of those countries, you know, they basically don't have the same that we have, right? So that from the product perspective, and also thinking about, you know, America, right? I know that we all in America complain, you know, since sometimes it's not going in the way that we want, right? But you know our country is the best country in the world, period. You know, you know, if you have traveled around the globe, a lot of people probably in the call has been traveling around the world, you know, it's no place with America, like America, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it's where everything can be happened, right? And, and, and like I said, you know, our country is the best of the world, but I was also thinking about this, you know, sometimes we have, you know, political issues, right? But you know, our country, you know, is, is, is very politically stable, right? Thinking about our financial system, right? It's a very strong financial system. You know, think for a minute what happened in 2008, 2007, you know, the financial crisis, right? You know, the US government bailed out, you know, banks, uh, financial institutions, and, you know, the year later, you know, it was a slow recovery, but you know, the country it was back in track, right? So look at about a legal system, right? A legal system is very, you know, it's a strong legal system, you know, focused for uh, property protection, right? There are a lot of ways for doing, you know, transfer, you know, well from one generation to other generation. There are a lot of diversification ways. So when you think about all that structure and you put together, you know, the product that we, we manufacture here in America, the life insurance product, you know, it's no better place where you can find, uh, you know, life insurance, right? There are a lot of jurisdictions, they are good countries, but they don't have everything that we have, right? I always say, and I, I want to apologize in advance if someone is uh, focused on the Chinese market, right? But, you know, China can produce a fake Rolex, but they cannot produce a Rolex, right? <laughs> China can produce a fake Louis Vuitton, but they cannot produce a Louis Vuitton, right? Well, China cannot produce, you know, life insurance like we produce in the United States and many other jurisdictions are in the same situation, right? So going back to your question, which is, was a very interesting, you know, when you are wealthy, you know, like we say, let's do this exercise thinking that we are wealthy, you know, right? A wealthy individual, you know, they want to own assets in U.S. dollar for currency diversification, right? You, you know that, you know, one dollar is one dollar here and it's going to be one dollar 20 years from now. You probably can buy less, right? But if you are in a, 40, in a jurisdiction, you know, in Latin America, I want to use Argentina, which is my home country, right? Uh, a few years ago, you know, with, I don't know, with uh, you can buy a dollar with maybe 25 Argentinian pesos, right? When you look at right now, you know, Argentina, uh, you want to buy a dollar right now, you need two, 300 pesos, right? So imagine if you buy that policy in Argentina in pesos, right? You buy, you know, a coverage for 20 million of pesos, right? But, you know, right now, you know, that coverage based on what is the value of the dollar, you know, your coverage is almost nothing, right? So that, that is kind of the interesting thing, you know? So again, you know, Life insurance in U.S. dollar is great. They love it. Everybody, which is you know, a wealthy people, they're looking you know to do asset diversification, and you know, and you can have that asset in the U.S. dollar even better, right? Also, for a national, they want to own asset outside of their home country, right? They never know what could come happen in their country. Now, let me give you an example. You know, Venezuela, twenty more than twenty years ago, thirty years ago, forty years ago. You know, I remember talking with friends from Venezuela, and they say they come into the United States and they say, "Oh, give me two apartments, give me two Rolls Royce, give me two Rolex, right?" Look at where is Venezuela today, right? Unfortunately, I feel very sorry for what's happened in the country, but you know. 
uh, you know, people who had money, you know, they own, they like to own assets the, outside of their home country because you never know, you know, what could happen in, in the future, right? Also, you know, the product that we manufacture here, you know, it maybe could have a better value proposition, right? Like you mentioned, you know, all these index products, right? You, of course, you know, life insurance is a protection product, right? But also, you know, you can grow, you know, uh, cash value inside of these policies, you know, get an advantage of, you know, access to, you know, index like a standard and poor or other specific index or international index, you know, when, when you are buying, you know, products in Latin America, for example, you know, there are no those options, right? The insurance companies are basically, you know, kind of such as to do investment in, in, in their home country, right? And it's no investment in the home country, you know, what is going to be the return, you know, that they can get uh, or, or the extra money that they put it in the policy for cash accumulation for retirement or for whatever reason that they are looking the policy, right? Uh, also, sometimes in, in, in another jurisdiction outside the United States, um, you know, maybe people cannot buy big face amount, right? You know, your, your organization, you guys has been in this business for many, many years. You guys have sell, you know, policies, you know, over 20, 50 million dollars of face amount, right? Well, you know, it's hard to find insurance companies outside the United States that they can provide, you know, that type of death benefit uh, uh, limit, right? And also, like I said before, you know, sometimes the products are less sophisticated than the product that we create here in the United States, you know? And because, you know, we have, you know, Again, you know, life insurance diversification, right? Insurance company, we want many customers as possible, right? Because, you know, as much customer you have, you know, you always reduce your risk exposure, right? So life insurance in the United States for that reason, you know, tend to be more affordable, right? For the same amount of money, you know, you maybe can buy more life insurance, more death benefit protection in, in the United States, right? Other reason why foreign national like the US products, the, the, the US market is, like it or not, you know, the US a, a insurance company, you know, we are highly regulated, right? We cannot wake up in the morning, the CEO of the company say, oh, I want to change all this, blah, 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 right? You know, because, you know, there are laws, you know, there are a lot of regulation, right? And that is good. You know, I, I, of course, we complain about regulations and things like that. But, you know, you are a wealthy person, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you buy a $25 million policy and the policy have these specific things and that, you know, you want to see, you know, that is an entity, you know, an independent entity that is regulated what the insurance company doing, right? And, and those regulations, you know, here in the United States, we have 50 regulators, right? And uh, so, uh, again, that is, is very important. And, and, and I think, in my personal opinion, when I have the chance to talk with uh, in a few times with these wealthy people, I, I, I don't talk directly with customers, I, I, you know, but, you know, when I talk once in a while with a customer or once in a while when I talk with distributor, like, you know, distributor, they are part of your organization, you know, they really like the privacy that we have in the United States, right? Basically, you know, you are applying for a, a big face amount, you know, you know that you need to provide third party financial information, right? You know, bank statements, you know, I don't know, the property, whatever, you know, whatever you, 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 you have, right? And, you know, these wealthy people, they are worried, you know, to share that information in the home country, not because they making the money in an illegal way. They are worried that maybe that information gets in the hands of, you know, the wrong people, right? They maybe can be subject to some of the family members, you know, have kidnapping or a ransom and things like that. So, you know, the privacy is something they, they like it a lot. And, and I think that is one of the best things also that the, the, one of the reasons why they, they're looking for this, because, you know, for example, myself, you know, I cannot see medical information. I cannot see financial information. I can have an idea when I talk with an advisor about a specific case, you know, if the customer can qualify or no, but basically all that information, you know, I cannot have access to that information because, you know, my role, uh, you know, in the company do not allow me to basically see that information for, for private and confidentiality law. No? Sorry for the long ex ex uh, answering of the question, but, you know, I, I think that, you know, again, you know, uh, this wealthy individual, they want to have the best of the best, and it's nothing best than the life insurance that is manufactured here in America. It's a, it's a great setup, uh, Fabian, and, and, and well done. And I would, 
I would second the, you know, outside of currency risk and the privacy and diversification and capacity challenges. I would, I would second that I have done a, uh, an independent study on products that are available for purchase abroad versus products in the United States. And they are significantly better. You know, we get, we get caught up here in the States reading the latest Bobby Samuelson article, whom I love and is very analytical. And we're comparing the different riders and multipliers and, and dividend crediting rates and things of that sort. And yes, there are they are differentiators. But if you compare our very worst product here in the United States, it's uh, it's comparable to one of the very best in some some countries abroad. So you know, wonderful setup and, and wonderful answer. So now we're going to get a little bit more controversial and move into the second question set. So you know, many carriers, Fabian, just simply do not welcome this type of business. And they see certain risks associated with writing this type of business, such as you know, political risks or, or anti-money laundering issues. Or um, I was hoping we could spend a few minutes on, on a couple of these risks in, in greater detail. Uh, would you mind just comment, uh, commenting on political risks associated with a foreign national and potential money laundering risks? associated with foreign nationals yes of course absolutely you know i, I always say that you know uh, it's a the high network foreign national market is a complex market right? but it's not a new market for for the insurance company right like i said you know early in, in my in the, in the first question you know i get exposure for first time in uh, international life insurance for saying in one war you know at the beginning of the 90s and insurance company has been offering you know a uh, uh, this product, you know, for many, many years, right? I remember when I was part of the, uh, the ING, uh, you know, ING was one of the first companies to start, you know, uh, through Security Life for Denver, one of the companies was part of the, you know, the ING group and, and now Boya Financial. Uh, uh, that that company uh, basically they was doing uh, business. However, you know at that time, if I remember correctly, the maximum death benefit that they was offering to international customer, I think it was, you know, very low, right? So again, you know, it's a complex market. Company has been in this market, you know, for many many years. However, you know, insurance company has been changing the way that they has been seeing this market. And they always, and we are always want to continue looking from ways uh, to mitigate risk, right? Uh, the way they, like I said, they, the, the way that we was doing business in the 80s is different than what we are doing business today. And I think, that, you know, the, unfortunately what happened in America, you know, and during the, you know, after in September 11, right? You know, that changed, you know, the, 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 the course of the financial services in the United States and around the world, right? So basically, you know, risks like you mentioned, you know, uh, and the money laundry, uh, you know, political risk has been something that, you know, is something that we are looking, you know, very specific. So let me talk about a little bit about political risk, you know. So basically, you know, it, this is kind of a standard. I think it's, it's not only for our company, but I think that this I apply at least the political risk for, for, for many of the company, right? We are looking to do business, you know, and, and, and we are basically, you know, looking at what happened around the globe. You know, we live in right now, something happened in a last corner of the world immediately, you know, we know in America and any part of the world where it's happened, right? So basically, you know, we are, we are looking, you know, uh, to a specific jurisdiction, what happened there, you know, um, and, and, and we are basically putting together a list of jurisdiction where we feel comfortable, right? Where we, we, we can see that we can mitigate, you know, the majority of the risks. You know, always there are going to be risks associated with this transaction, right? But the more important thing is to try to see how we can mitigate those risks, right? Uh, and, and again, you know, what we did and what other competitors are doing, and even the reinsurance company are doing, they basically, are, they basically say, you know what, these are the kind of the list of jurisdiction that we feel uh, comfortable. Right. In our program, in the Symmetra program, we have approximately, you know, 100 countries available for uh, for uh, coverage. Right. If the person meet our program criteria and and things like that, you know, we have approximately 100 countries. But always we are going to look 
for countries that they have a good relation with the United States, right? Uh, as you know, you know, they are, you know, countries that they don't have good relations or they don't have controls uh, or basically, you know, they, they have sanctions, right? Uh, so basically, you know, we are looking to see, you know, what happened there, you know, uh, and basically that is kind of the thing, you know, I, like I said, like I said before, you know, and I want to use the example of Venezuela, right? A great country, you know, 20, 30 plus years ago, you know, unfortunately right now, you know, it's, it's, it's out of control, right? So basically those, you know, Venezuela used to be a super preferred jurisdiction and we're going back to the 90s, you know, and now it's basically a decline jurisdiction with everything that happened there. Yeah, of course, we are not going to take, you know, people from North Korea, for example, right? You know, no one from North Korea is going to be able to, you know, justify the financial need of, of life insurance, right? But, you know, they're all a jurisdiction. So we're keeping a close, uh, a close eye to what's happening around the world and, and seeing you know, you know how we can continue mitigating the risk, right? In terms of the money laundry, you know that that's that's a topic, you know, very interesting because you know again, you know, we are dealing with people where we don't have sometimes a lot of information, right? Or, or, or we can no access, you know, a, a lot of information about them. So basically, uh, you know, what we are doing all the time is, you know, take a look, you know, a close, close look of every single customer that basically, you know, they are applying for life insurance, you know. This is my personal opinion, like I said before, you know, and, you know, a minute ago, I was thinking, uh, you know, about thinking about a millionaire, right? And, and right now I was thinking, you know, it's thinking of someone that want to basically, you know, wash money, right? For, for putting away clean money, right? It, it probably, you know, U.S. life insurance, it will be not too much attracted to them, you know? Thinking for a moment about this, right? You know, uh, uh, they need to come to the United States, right? The majority of the countries to, uh, you know, uh, the United States require, you know, travel visa, right? So that means that you need to go to a US embassy in your own country, you know, present, you know, information, right? Uh, uh, personal information, you know, apply for the visa, then go back, pick up the passport and things like that, right? So assuming that you get the visa, right? Then you need to basically, you know, come to the United States, you know, fly to the United States, you know, and, and basically, you know, provide to the insurance company with those, you know, identification, right? Copy of the passport, copy of the visa, you know, and things like that, right? Then you need to go to the, um, the, the application process, right? So basically everything that we're doing is here in America, right? We are not soliciting business outside the United States and there's no way for us to allow medical examination uh, or, or complete forms, you know, outside of the country. Uh, in addition of the complete the application, they want to need to do the medical examination, which includes, you know, you know, the blood example and things like that, which is basically, you know, we're getting a full copy of the DNA of this individual, right? And, and in addition of that, you know, uh, imagine, you know, okay, they want to put money in the policy, right? And, you know, all these people that they are in, you know, in the money laundry business, right? And, and everybody who is an agent, probably they need to do an entry money uh, course, right? These people are always looking from ways to place the money I taking the money out very quickly, right? And, you know, I am not an expert in products, you know, I know very little about product, but I know something that all the products has is called surrender charges, right? So basically, you know, if someone put a, I don't know, a significant amount of money in a policy, you know, they cannot take the same amount of money, you know, the next the week later, right? So basically, you know, I don't, I, it could be situations, but I think that, you know, there are a small number of situations where someone who is in that business are going to use a life insurance uh, to basically, you know, get, the, wash the money, clean the money, right? But there could be situations where you can face, you know, a, a, a potential person that is doing that, you know? So I, I would say that, you know, those individuals also, you know, uh, they probably will be looking for jurisdictions with less controls, you know, in the United States, you know, the, you know, the Patriot Act, know your customer, you know, like I said, you know, since was after September 11, you know, there are so much thing here, right? That basically, you know, uh, require, you know, a financial institution to bring a new customer, especially when it's a customer from overseas, right? So again, 
it could be an opportunity. I, I believe that if someone who is looking to do that, probably I want to look in for other financial products, like maybe open a bank account or open a saving account, right? Or maybe buying real estate, right? But I think most of those people are going to look in for jurisdiction where they have loopholes, right? Uh, you know, they can basically, you know, go that way, you know. However, you know, we are performing, you know, an AML review in every single customer that we receive just to make sure that we are bringing on board the right customers, right? Baby, well, well said. Along those top, along this topic, right? It's a, uh, this, this continues to come up when we talk about your know, foreign national underwriting in conversation. How do events like 9-11 or the Panama Papers leak in 2016 affect the ability to obtain U.S. domestic life insurance in the financial underwriting process? Yeah, you know, those, those uh, uh, in some way, you know, uh, there was two uh, interesting events, right? Um, unfortunately, you know, September 11, you know, a lot of people lost their life, uh, you know, families lost, you know, parents, you know, loved ones. Uh, it, 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 September 11, I think, impacts the way that the insurance companies start seeing the way that they conduct the business, right? I think, it, you know, um, America, I don't want to say that we was naive, but, you know, in some way, we never think as, uh, as what happened in September 11 could happen in this country, and unfortunately happened, right? So basically, you know, uh, the government take action and basically create all these regulations just to prevent, you know, as much as possible, you know, the, the, the people who are in those, you know, business, you know, like terrorists and things like that, you know, get access to, you know, to money, right? Uh, the Panama paper is, is something very interesting, you know, and I always said, you know, the, the, I love when and a, it's a scandal in the financial services, right? <laughs> <laughs> because basically, you know, uh, do those scandal, you know, we can see who are, you know, basically playing, you know, outside the rules and what are the instruments that these people, you know, are able to put together, right, just to, you know, high money or, you know, get in the corruption business and things like that. So I, I think, you know, when you, look at, when you look at the wealthy or when you're looking at the worldwide uh, millionaire population, you know, usually it's a, a small number of people that they are not playing by the rule, right? Um, and, and, and that's good because, you know, that, that give confidence, you know, to the insurance company and other financial institutions that basically, you know, that we are working, you know, with, with, the, with the right people, right? So, again, you know, it, it very interesting, but I always say that always is a small percentage of that people. And when a scandal like this happens, you know, we are able, you know, to see what's going on, adjust around the writing guidelines, maybe with a specific jurisdiction or be a little bit more restricted or doing extra due diligence with a specific jurisdiction in specific areas. And also at the same time, you know, we can continue improving, you know, anti-money lender process, which is good because, you know, people are always worried about, you know, anti-money lender. It's good that we are doing those process, you know, you know, uh, imagine for example, right, that, you know, sometimes, you know, you know your customer, but you don't know your customer, you know, very, very deep, right? You, you, you know, you think, oh, it's a nice person, have a family, have a business, right? But you don't know how he get there, right? And, and how he get there and what he has behind the scene, right? So I think that those, those type of scandal help us to basically make sure that we work with the right people. Also, you guys were the right people because you as a broker are the first uh, firewall, right? You basically provide to us with a lot of information, but also at the same time, you don't have the resources that we have as an insurance company to go deeply in this customer. So when we have someone that maybe tests positive, you know, from anti-money laundry or, or, or other things, you know, the first that we are doing is we're going back to the, to the customer. You know, the customer is basically, you know, the distributor, right? And say, hey, you know, we maybe are not working, you know, or maybe we don't have enough information to identify this person, right? It, you know, could be 20 million of people that have the name of Fabian Gonzalez, right? But, you know, 
maybe it's another Fabian Gonzalez with a different uh, uh, middle name, right? That, that, that the, uh, the other Fabian Gonzalez, right? So again, you know, very interesting, you know, all these scandals, all the things that happened, you know, help us to continue being business, which what we want, right? We want yeah. to continue being business. Re really well said. So, so just, yep. You know, 10 seconds that you can, you can, you know, feel free to, to Google this on your own. So the, the Panama Papers was, was uh, a scandal where uh, about 11 million documents were leaked uh, on or around 2016. Um, wealthy international clients were moving money to a Panama Panamanian law firm um for purpose of for legal purposes right including fraud and tax evasion and international sanctions and and um you know it was quite a shock to the uh foreign national underwriting community to learn of this and see how the bad behavior exists in the world uh but as fabian has you know eloquently said it's really complex to try and attempt those maneuvers into a, a u.s entity and financial institution that is so widely governed and regulated as a, a, our life insurance industry. Um, so it did, I believe it, it, it hit the pause button for select carriers in, in underwriting foreign nationals, but it also comforted many others in that you can see who the bad actors were. And as Fabian alluded to earlier, there, there are easier ways to, to do bad things than try and drop premium into a, a U.S. domestic life insurance policy. So, Damien, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just kind of shift gears for a minute. So assume a company like Symmetra um, looks at these risks that we've spoken about today. They look at the political unrest of certain company uh, countries, uh, corruption, uh, kidnapping history, COVID. Uh, which is now a big one, and any other health crisis for, for that matter. How does a company like Symmetra assess grades uh, to foreign countries that enable us to underwrite certain limits or risk class? And so for instance, an A grade means you can issue, let's call it up to your auto buying preferred plus is available, any product line, it's a lot easier to underwrite an A-rated country than a D-rated company. Just give us a, a, a summarization on how you assess those grades and, and how the, the, the mechanics of those graded assessments can move with time pre, mid, and post-COVID. Yeah, no, that, that, you know, that, that's a huge concern always, you know. Because if you take a look, you know, everything that we're doing in the financial service, especially in the life insurance, you know, business is about managed risk, right? Basically, you know, that's, that's what an insurance company do all the time, right? Offer products and also at the same time, manage the risks that you have in your uh, portfolio of clients, right? Uh, and, and especially, you know, the biggest risk, you know, is always the mortality risk, right? When, you know, you, you have, you know, things like, you know, COVID, for example, right? Or other, you know, pandemics that they, 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 we have been facing, you know, maybe long, long ago, but things like that, uh, you know, can affect your, 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 your profitability and, you know, everything that you're doing in the business, right? So what we always looking, you know, is, you know, the foreign national market is very specific, right? Like we say before, you know, you know, we are not looking at all the foreign national that lives in a specific jurisdiction, right? We are always targeting, you know, those small, you know, 1%, you know, maybe 2% of the population in those countries that they are extremely wealthy, right? So having access to good health system, you know, is extremely important for us because, you know, if you have a heart attack, you know, and you are in a jurisdiction where, you know, basically in order to get to the first, you know, uh, hospital or clinic or whatever, you know, it's taking you three hours, you know, you know, in three hours, you know, that person could die, right? So basically, you know, having access to good healthcare is, is extremely important, you know, but also, you know, everything that is like you say is around, right? You know, maybe you have, you know, corruption there, right? So that, that's another risk, you know, that was the reason why, you know, anti-money laundry plays a big role, you know, the legal department, you know, when <clears throat> when we receive customers that they create some of 
very complex, you know, structures, you know, uh, behind the ownership, you know, uh, could be, you know, also other thing that, that we are looking, right? So depending depending on the country, you know, like you said, you know, there are countries where we can go super preferred and there are countries where basically there are no coverage available, right? So, and, and also, also depending where the client lives, right? There are, you know, you know, there are areas, for example, I wanna use as an example, you know, Mexico, right? Uh, and could be other jurisdiction around the world, right? Different situation, right? But for example, Mexico, you know, we are seeing, you know, uh, areas where, you know, they are high risk, right? And basically even, you know, uh, uh, people who live there, you know, they are worried and basically, you know, they live in those areas and they are, because they are wealthy, they are relocating, you know, and more safety in a part of the country, right? But for example, you know, you have areas where, you know, uh, there are different challenges, right? For example, you know, I'm thinking about areas like, you know, close to borders with Afghanistan, for example, right? Or, or areas, you know, in, in Israel, close to, you know, Gaza, you know, uh, there are a lot of uncertainties that, you know, someone can do something and maybe, you know, someone who was walking around, you know, get, you know, they get killed, right? So we are looking at all those details and based on all those details and working very close with the reinsurance companies, right? Uh, we get access to a significant data that they have, you know, they have, you know, life expectations, you know, uh, seeing like that, for example, you know, something that is very common in, in, in some countries in Asia, you know, is hepatitis B, right? Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, things about that. In other areas, maybe it's another, you know, thing, right? So basically, we always looking about what's happening and in, in conjunction with the reinsurance company, uh, basically, you know, it's a kind of like a list of jurisdiction, you know, jurisdiction that they, you know, we, we you know, the reinsurance company, us, we feel more comfortable for many, many reasons, right? And then, you know, jurisdiction where, you know, unfortunately, is nothing that we can do. You know, sometimes we get, also situation where you have a, a, a you know a person who is a citizen of a, 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 a good jurisdiction I, I, I want to use an example you know United Kingdom right for example you know you know good financial services system there you know a lot of ways to prevent you know uh, crimes you know uh, uh, good access to healthcare and things like that but you maybe have a US a UK United Kingdom citizen you know spending significant amount of time in jurisdiction less secure from you know medical issues you know maybe they they they, they have business in in some areas in Africa you know or or, or they maybe travel once in a while, you know, and they spend significant amount of time, you know, outside the United Kingdom. So that became a little bit challenging because depending on the jurisdiction, that, that individual, they maybe lose the super preferred rating class if, if he's healthy to qualify for that class because he's going to areas where, you know, they are less access to healthcare or they are, you know, more I don't know, problems with water contamination, right? Or, or other type of things that you can get a disease, right? So again, you know, we, we, are, we are looking uh, very specific about that. And I always say, and I always recommend to, you know, uh, to the people, you know, especially, you know, to your agents, to your broker, right? Take a look at guidelines, right? And in our guidelines, basically in the last few pages, we have a charge with, I believe, uh, approximately a little bit over of 100 jurisdiction. And take a look, you know, if the country's there, you know, and you don't see nothing, you know, like a note, like, like a note uh, at the bottom of the, of the charge that said, oh, careful in this area or careful in the other area, you know, give us a call, you know, your team are very capable, you know, your, your cell support team in your office, you know, they, they has been working with us and with other insurance companies. So you guys are aware also what jurisdiction represent a, a, a additional challenge. And again, you know, I always available, you know, if someone have a very specific customer, you know, give us a call to, you know, anyone in your team, you know, anyone in your team can call me and we can figure out what yeah. could be available or we can, or we can not do. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Fabian. That's really helpful. And, you know, very, very, uh, very timely. And as, as, uh, as Fabian alludes to healthcare systems and healthcare, right. Coupled with that comes with COVID, you know, what, what carriers or what countries are doing well with COVID, where, what countries are not doing so well, what countries have access to vaccinations, uh, better quality hospitals. So, you know, the, the State Department will issue guidelines based yep. on the, the, uh, the intensity of COVID in a given country. So 
you know, foreign national underwriting got real tricky uh, March, April, May of, of 2020. So, you know, as, as uh, Fabian set a wonderful backdrop to uh, my commentary, you know, healthcare systems and, and any healthcare crisis in that particular country is very important to their grade assessment. Um, Fabian, it seems that Symmetra is very committed. I'm sorry, let me take one step back. And we had a couple of questions from, from the audience. Okay. So one question is, okay, you meet all of the, 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 the political risks, the financial risks, the, the, the uh, uh, grade assessments. Are there countries that just simply have governing bodies that will not allow their citizens to buy a U.S. policy, such as France or Japan? Yeah, that, that, that's a very interesting question. And, you know, uh, I can talk for hours about that, but I am promised that I want to be briefly about that, right? I always said, you know, and I use this example, right? You know, uh, there, there are those countries, right? But, you know, imagine, I, I, I like to do exercise to asking people to think about things, right? Imagine, and I want to pick in a country, you know, imagine Italy, right? Imagine the one day Italy said, uh, no one can drink uh, coffee outside Italy because we have the best coffee and we don't want you guys, you know, to have any problem with drinking other coffee uh, around the globe, right? And basically, you know, you are an Italian citizen, you know, you jump on a plane, you know, going to beautiful areas here in the United States. And basically, you know, you was from Italy to the United States, I believe they are probably, I don't know, maybe 10 hour fly, you know, depending on which airport you land in the United States, right? Maybe more if you go into, you know, the Pacific uh, areas, you know, the West area of the United States in California. And imagine that person was there, you know, many, many hours, you know, and he basically get out of the airport and he pick up the car and then he said, you know what, I want to drink a coffee, right? And basically the person go to, let's just say McDonald's or Starbucks, you know, and they say, hey, I want a coffee. You know, I can guarantee you that uh, the person who are going to sell the coffee to this individual, they are not going to ask for the passport for the nationality of those individual and is going to check if they can sell a coffee to, you know, someone which is from Italy, right? Of course, financial services are a different war, right? But all those law that exist uh, and outside of the United States, and I am not an attorney, and this is not a, a legal recommendation, it's just my two cents. Those laws, they don't have jurisdiction in the United States. You know, a law from Argentina has no jurisdiction in a court of America. You know, a law from Italy has no jurisdiction in a court of America. You know, what the judge, you know, let, let's see that you get in trouble and basically, you know, you end in going to court, for example, right? Basically, you know, it's not any law in the United States that says that you cannot sell a policy to a foreign national person. It's not any law in the United States that they said a foreign national cannot buy a house in the United States, right? So basically, if you respect everything that is required by the law, right? The law that this land, you know, which is basically in the life insurance, basically 50 law, right? If the state of uh, California it said, you know, is the solicitation was done in California? Is the application was done in California? Is the company who is uh, 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 the company who manufactured this policy is uh, registered in California? The product is available under the, the, the California regulation. You know, the agent who are selling the product to this individual is a licensed agent, you know, with a valid licensed agent in the state of California. The client is doing the medical examination, you know, in the United States, you know, and the policy is gonna be delivered in the United States. We haven't broke any law. We actually are just as to US regulation, you know? Uh, so basically, you know, my opinion is, this is again, I am not an attorney, you know, this is just, just the common sense is those laws, they don't have jurisdiction in their land in this land. So again, I am not telling the customer, you can violate your law. You know, you always, as a customer, you need to check, you know, with your uh, external legal counsel, you know, your, your advisor in your home country. But that person is basically, you know, interested in life insurance, you know, it's nothing from us that said you cannot sell to that individual, right? I know there are uh, some companies that they basically, go with a different approach, 
right? They, they said, okay, we don't sell to people from France. We don't sell to people from Japan. We don't sell for people from this place, right? There are other companies that say, oh, we can sell to those individuals if they create a US entity, which is basically something happened. We wanna say, well, you know what? We are not selling to your customer, to your citizen. We are selling to the policy to a US entity, which is the owner of the policy. And basically the, the US entity has an insurance interest on the life of that individual, right? But that is kind of tricky because basically, you know, you are telling the customer, oh, create a US entity and we're helping you to violate your law, right? So our approach has been very transparent. You know, we allow two types of ownership, you know, direct ownership, basically, you know, the insurer can be the owner of the policy or if for whatever reason, he feel more comfortable to have an, a US entity as an owner of the policy, we allow that as well, you know? So basically, you know, our, our program, you know, try to be flexible as much as we can in, in the type of issues. Yeah, Fabian, well done. So we have about nine, uh, actually, we don't have nine minutes. We, we, we set the, the, the call from 1245. Two, two quick questions. If, yes. if maybe we can bring this to, uh, to a conclusion and put a nice little bow on it. So first question is just a, a, a little thank you for your participation. Um, what is Symmetra is very committed to this marketplace and seeing tremendous growth. What what are country, what are companies like Symmetra? What is Symmetra doing differently than other carriers to win this type of business? Yeah, you know, I believe their big, biggest differentiation is that we have been putting dedicated resources, you know, uh, around this business, right? And these dedicated resources, they are not resources that are there. They are also resources there that understand, you know, uh, this market, right? Uh, especially, you know, two areas that we are very, very key is, you know, the underwriting area. We have a fantastic group of underwriting that they have experience working with international customer. And also we have a, a, a new business area where basically they understand what is needed in each case. You know, in this case, we need A, B, and C. In this case, we need A, B, and C, and D, and B, and X, right? So basically, you know, we are very, very committed with the market, but also we understand the market, you know. Also, and again, this is my, my personal opinion, you know, I believe they are, uh, you know, in, in the market, you know, mostly of the competitors in this market, you know, they are playing in this market, you know, using kind of like a one size fits all approach, right? They maybe allow one line of product, they maybe allow this specific thing, or they maybe want just a specific this customer with this kind of profile. You know, what we are trying to do, and I believe that we wanna con try to continue doing this, is being flexible where we can be flexible, right? And I think that that's the way where we are wanna win uh, you know, and continue winning in this market, right? Our, our program is very competitive. I, I don't wanna discuss the program. Your, your team is very capable about our program. But again, you know, look at, for example, you know, product portfolio, right? Our full portfolio of product is available for foreign national. You know, we have term products available for foreign national, index products available for foreign national, index product with focus on protection, index product with focus on accumulation, traditional UL. Again, I, I think that, you know, with product offering, which is at the end of what the, what the customer is looking for, you know, we have our full portfolio available for them. Wonderful. Uh, I, I'm going to get into, I'm going to get into one more here and, and try to, to, to kind of, again, wrap this up and, and put a bow on it. So, so not every agent we work with has a natural market for this type of business, Fabian. And yep, it cool. seems as though there's a very small demographic in our industry does really, really well in this, in this multicultural market. If an agent wanted to showcase their capabilities in underwriting and uh, providing policies to foreign nationals, what types of centers of influence would they want to target and how would they position their practice to gain traction in this very specialized market? Yeah, you know, that I think this is, is, is the, the, the more, all the question was important, but this one is very important because, you know, people want to jump into this market, but sometimes, you know, people don't wake up in the morning, you know, flying from China or from Latin America, say, oh, I wanna buy life in policy. You know, they arrive at an airport and they looking, you know, for the yellow pages or Google, you know, insurance agent and, and going there, right? You probably don't want that customer. We probably don't want that customer either, right? So working with center of influence is key in this market to be successful, right? And not every single uh, uh, 
sell, sell, uh, um, center of influence, it maybe have the right high network for a national client that, that you want and that we want, right? I will say very briefly that, you know, financial institution is probably one of the best places where you can find, you know, good prospects, right? If someone is wealthy in Latin America, I can guarantee you they have a bank account in the United States with a significant amount of money, right? Even they get 0% interest rate and they need to pay a fee just to have the, the mail, uh, you know, with a statement. But financial institutions are great. I highly recommend it, you know, financial institution, you know, they, they basically, you know, they have, you know, like a war print, right? And also, you know, other, you know, financial institutions here in the United States, sometimes, you know, wealthy people, they want, you know, go to a small uh, financial institution where they can have, you know, access to service more quickly than calling to a 1A100 number, right? So that, that's a great thing, you know, real estate agents, right? People who buy, you know, houses here in America, you know, they probably want to need, you know, I don't know, home insurance, right? Or, or if someone is wealthy, maybe have the house and maybe have a beautiful car, right? And they probably want to need car insurance because no one is driving in the United States without COVID, right? You know how, uh, how much money can cost you and how many liabilities you can have without driving without, you know, with, a, with insurance, right? So basically, you know, PNC agent, real estate agent, you know, and other areas, you know, CPAs and attorneys, right? If, if, if you have a, let's say that you have, you are a wealthy Mexican, you have a business in Mexico and you have a subsidiary of your company here in the United States, you probably want to need someone to help you with filing the taxes of the corporation, right? We all know that, you know, taxes is very complicated sometimes to file and even, you know, people who understand basic things, you know, they have a CPA that help them with the filing of the taxes and also the law, right? You know, you want to do a business here, you know, there are law for many other things, right? So working with attorneys they are in this market are, are also very, very important. So, and again, and, and, and everybody can develop their own type of also thing. You know, I want to share very briefly with something that happened to me recently. You know, I was talking with an agent that is in, in Seattle, you know, and this Asian world with a a lot of wealthy families in, 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 in Asia. And basically this person is kind of a, like an advisor, you know, all these wealthy people, they want to send their kids to prestigious college and university in America. So this person is a consultant. They say, okay, your kid want to learn about law. Well, the best, you know, universities are this, this and that, you know, your, your kid won't become a doctor. Well, the best universities are this, this and that. So, you know, you may be thinking, well, you know, this person using this, but if they are able to pay a significant amount of money to someone to basically analyze what are the best school for their kids, they probably have money. And that kid probably need to be living in the United States. They need to have a place. Uh, they need to go, you know, every day to school. So maybe, you know, a referral source is someone who were, you know, recommending people school or university also could be uh, an opportunity. So again, uh, there are many ways to do it, uh, and, and you probably will be agreed the banks, financial institutions, uh, other financial institutions, CPAs, attorneys, uh, probably are the best way to enter in this market if you are not familiar, you know, or you don't have access directly to this type of customers. Well done, my friend. It has uh, been a pleasure presenting with you. Now, you know, more often than not, than not the questions will come in. Hey, will you write a Venezuelan resident? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, Venezuela is a decline jurisdiction for, I believe, the majority of the insurance company. Actually, the reinsurance company don't want, you know, have any risk exposure to Venezuela. Also, for our case, also, you know, it's kind of our... Uh, um, uh, uh, we have a list of prohibit, we call prohibit jurisdiction, right? Venezuela is one of those, unfortunately. You know, it's, it's sad, but uh, unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do, yeah. nothing. But, you know, things can change. You know, I always say to the people, 20 years ago, no one takes people from Colombia, right? Colombia right now is a preferred jurisdiction. If someone from Colombia wants to apply, they can get preferred rate. You know, and look at the other side of the coin, right? 20 plus years ago, Venezuela was super preferred jurisdiction and right now it's a decline jurisdiction. So maybe things change, change in the future, but I don't see it, at least at Symmetra, uh, having an opportunity in the short term for doing uh, citizen of Venezuela. Thank you, thank you. So I've answered all the other questions as we uh, went through the presentation. Um, you know, the common question at the end of the, uh, a, a dissertation like this is, you know, how do I get started? Uh, 
Um, will you write this? Do you like that? Do you? Well, there are so many variables and the, mo the easiest way to approach this marketplace and get the most efficient answer to your questions is if we have all the data. One little detail can take a case completely and, and spin it completely on its head, right? There are some complexities involved. You're asking clients to come to the United States. You're asking them to be solicited in the United States. You're promising them numbers. You're showing illustrations. Every little detail needs to be accounted for. So we have a one page questionnaire in English and in Spanish, and it'll ask a host of questions. I don't need signatures. You can easily walk your client through it on the phone. That's basically your citizenship, your visa type. When does it expire? Right? Do you bank in the US mainland? Do you have immediate relatives in the US with citizenship or green cards? What do your assets look like? So you know, it, this is the, 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 the most efficient way to conduct business. Again, we have our, the, any marketer here at, at, at Life Brokerage can send you this form in English or Spanish. You complete the form, you'll send it into your marketing representative and in 48 hours, we will know which carrier is most appropriate <clears throat> to recommend to this particular client and give you the guidelines, company, uh, country risk, and uh, potential illustrations uh, for policies that that particular applicant could secure. So um, as we're approaching the one o'clock mark, again, I want to thank my friend Fabian Gonzalez for co-presenting. Uh, we appreciate your attendance and stay safe, everyone. And again, thank you for your continued business and support and for spending an hour with us this afternoon. Be well.